All right, next game, uh, Titans at the Texans. Uh, this line open up Titans minus seven. It's up to seven and a half. Uh, so who do you like in this game? Yeah, so I kind of like the Texans here a little bit. Uh, I, I got like two units on them right now. Could go a little more, maybe a little less, depending on how confident I am. Um, I know this is a win and in scenario for the Titans here, but um, I think that this line's just a little bit too high. Um, you know, people are really confident in how the Titans have played this year, but they've they've put up some poor performances and played, and they've had some close wins. Um, earlier in the season, they beat the Jaguars, I think, by just two points. Um, and they've had a number of games that have been decided by one possession or less. And I, you know, I know Derrick Henry's going to run wild on the Texans. They allow more rushing yards than any team in the NFL. And I know Ryan Tannehill should have a good game in this one, but I'm not convinced the Titans defense is going to be able to contain Deshaun Watson as much as this line indicates. Um, they had a lot of trouble against Aaron Rodgers. Granted, that was in the snow, and that's an MVP caliber player. But Deshaun Watson has kind of flown under the radar as to how well he's playing. Um, for a team that hasn't been very good and has gone through a lot of, you know, turmoil with coaching staff changes and losing top, his top three of his four receivers. Um, but I think that the Titans, uh, they aren't going to be able to contain the run game for the Texans. They're not going to be able to contain Deshaun Watson uh, because they can't get pass rush pressure on him. So I could see this being a, uh, you know, a potential three point game comes down to the wire with a field goal. So if we're getting seven and a half, I think it's a no brainer to bet on the Texans here. Um, and if anyone's wondering, there may be motivational issues on the Texans side. There are two things to keep in mind. One, if they beat the Titans and the Colts win, it's possible that the Titans are out of the playoffs, which would be a huge accomplishment for the Texans to, uh, you know, kind of hang their hat on this season and be like, Hey, this was a lost season, but you know, at least we did that. And JJ Watts post game uh, con comments, what I was getting to. And now Chris is, uh, Chris is asking about, I think that they will motivate them to treat the, treat this game like the Super Bowl as well, because JJ Watts, an outspoken leader on that team. And he was livid at their effort um, last week. And I think that guys are going to be apt to step up for Watt and at least put forth their best foot in this game. Now that doesn't mean they're going to win, but if they bring their best effort and they play really, really hard in all facets of the game, they should be able to cover this spread. So I'm going to be on the Texans here. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, and I, I think people like kind of it, – it's weird how people uh, view the Texans week in and week out. Like like ever since Thanksgiving, like they, they played the Colts and that was a high effort game the first time and they were in position to win and then Deshaun Watson – and the center had that uh, mishap or the center had a bad snap and Watson, uh, he had a chance to get it. And then he then and that was a fumble. And he, he had that, he had the towel on his head on like sitting on the bench by himself. And you knew he'd be deflated and the whole team would be deflated the following week. So the following week they played Chicago and they put no effort into that game. They got blown out. Uh, so people were super down on them after that. Then they played the Colts again. And that was another high effort game for them. And they, they almost, took the Colts to overtime, but Kiki Cutie fumbled inside the five-yard line at the very end of the game. Yet another deflating ending for the Texans. And so, like, it's just a surprise at all that they put forth no effort against the Bengals last week. Um, you know, they had nothing to play for. They were huge favorites. It was kind of like, uh, like, hey, why do we even care about this? Uh, we just lost, quote-unquote, our Super Bowl. So um, I think this is another chance for the Texans to win their, their quote-unquote, Super Bowl um, against the Titans. Like like you said, knocking them out of the uh, the playoffs. I think that's pretty huge. Like, it could at least give them some hope. And, and of course, they have nothing to play for here because they have nothing to lose for, rather, uh, because they have no first-round pick or second-round pick, so they can't really improve uh, in the draft positioning. Uh, so this is this is all they have to play for and uh like you were talking about the titans have no pass rush at all so even if they're up double digits uh deshaun Watts is going to have all the time in the world to connect with uh brandon cooks and, and cutie and chad hansen and and like he could get the backdoor touchdown and i, I think this line's too high uh the advanced spread on this game was titans minus four and a half it's up to seven and a half so we're getting three points of value with six and seven um, I, I love Houston. I, I think they're going to come out, and uh, I think Aurora Snomo might claim uh, one of her victims here. <laughs> yeah, and this is this is really making me like the more we talk about this game, the more excited I am to bet the Texans. So I'm probably going to up my unit count. I just think that the the motivation for the Texans is definitely there. And I, you know, this whole year I've kind of not been sold on the Titans, even though I bet them to win the Super Bowl at one point. That was because I thought Tom Brady might sign there. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, this this game and this line just feels like a great spot for the Texans.
Yeah, I agree. And, and you, of course, you have that great bet on the Buccaneers uh, to win the Super Bowl, which I'm super jealous of. But uh, yeah, well, uh, let's get to the next. 